Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how I've done the Procreate painting Quiet Place. As you can see when I first start out, I put in just large blocks of color. This is to give myself a general idea of where I want everything and it's to help cover up all the white. Now this video is obviously greatly sped up. Um, I think you guys would get pretty bored if I left it at its normal speed. I'm just filling it in, filling everything in. I'm using several different brushes. I believe that using many types of textures and many different brushes, it just gives a nice painterly effect to the painting and it just helps it just have depth. There I'm choosing my various colors and I'm choosing my various brushes. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but when I open up my color uh, palette there where the color circle is, my palette is completely empty. And I didn't plan my colors out uh, too in depth for this. I had a general idea of where I wanted to go, but I wanted to leave everything open and loose so that I wouldn't feel like I had to go in one direction or another. Literally all I did was get out a paper and pencil and I put down purple grays, orangey yellows, and gray greens. That's all I wrote down. I knew that that was going to be my basic colors. I'm sorry if there's birds and honking in the background. Um, we're in a place that's not our own and um, it's rather noisy. All right, I've skipped some parts there. Uh, just basic building up of colors. And you can see I'm adding flowers to the trees in back. And I'm not going in with any special brush and I'm not making each little individual petal and everything. All I'm really doing is putting down blocks of color. I think that was done mostly with the Nico rule. It's a brush that comes with Procreate, it's awesome. And um, I'm just putting down blocks of color. And every time I go to open um, my brushes there, I'm choosing something completely different. I have a completely different texture every, every few minutes in this painting. And I just, I love that effect. It keeps things loose and it, it prevents you from having a very tight painting, if I could put it that way. Okay, here we have more flowers going in, and in the end, I ended up adding a lot of flowers, but if you look closely, they're really nothing more than blobs of color put down on top of more blobs of color. But our brain sees this, and it understands that those are flowers. It's completely unnecessary to draw every little petal. This bush that I'm painting in here, it reminds me of something that we see growing a lot in Malawi, Africa, and it has the most beautiful little orange flowers on that. So that's kind of my hats off to Malawi there. If you look here, you can see that built right into Procreate. You go to the color palette, go to Harmony, and then right there where the, you see it written colors, that's a little menu there and you can get various harmonies and it'll give you the colors that work well together and you can see how the colors that I've chosen for this painting they all work quite nicely together now I'm just jumping back in and I'm just adding more and more texture I'm going in with big brushes I'm going in with little teensy tiny brushes I have paint spatters and all kinds of stuff going on there. I think at one point I even have like these little itsy bitsy stars that are that are scattered throughout. Anything to add that texture that I love so much. You can find free texture brushes all over the internet. Um, I think out of all the different texture brushes I've used to make this painting. I think I only actually paid for one of them. Most of them, 
they either came with Procreate, I found them for free on the internet, or I played around and made my own brushes. With that, something I would highly recommend you figure out to do um, is to make your own brushes. It's a lot of fun and you can come up with very unique looks that only you have. I mean, what's not to like about that, right? The painting really needed a pop of color at this point, so I'm dropping in, again, just big swatches of color, but they translate as flowers. At this point, I still don't have any colors in my color palette. I think I add something a little bit later, but anytime I want a different color, I just pick it up right off the screen there. And there's my sunset going in. I guess it's kind of a reverse sunset, huh? Since usually the lighter colors should be lower. But you know what? This is my painting and this is my world, so I'll make it however I like. That's the wonderful thing about painting, is that you can change things up, you can switch colors around, it's yours. Have at it. Here you can see my absolutely horrendous walkway going in. The perspective is all off, and I absolutely hated it, but I just left it there while I thought about it for a few minutes, so I can figure out how on earth am I going to save this. And just keep on building up color, layers upon layers upon layers of texture and color. These flowers, what do you call them? They have like the big, long flower spikes and they're just covered in flowers. I have no idea what they're called, but they are so, so beautiful. If you know, drop a comment down below and let us all know what they are. In my mind here, I had, I was picturing roses, but as you can see, I'm not bothering with individual petals. I'm just going in with splotches of color. Those blue flowers looked a bit lonely there in the middle, so I'm adding uh, some, what, what do you call them, little border flowers as they go in. And if you look at the perspective of this painting, everything is pointing towards our focal point in the middle. finally figured out what I can do to fix the pathway there so I'm hard at work trying to get rid of it trying to fix it I should say for all the colors in the walkway I just picked up what I already had down and that's what I worked with. Here in front I'm going to be adding a few large flowers because it needs just a little bit more visual interest but I'm going to keep the, the shapes fairly vague and I'm not going to be adding any detail. It's just going to be splotches of color because I want the focal point to go to the middle of the painting which I have yet to finish, I might add. If you're enjoying this painting, please subscribe. It really helps the channel.
finally have the background and the surrounding area how I like. So I'm going in and starting to touch up uh, the little place there in the middle. For the light, I added down my strong color first, the nice bold orange that'll match the sky. And then I just lightened it up around it. I used an airbrush to lighten up around it with a low opacity. You do have to make sure that you get things dark enough and get the shadows in or else the picture just looks completely unreal. Every painting needs a cat. It's not complete without a cat. I miss my cat. We're away at the moment and he's staying with somebody else. You can see I made a new layer there. I set it to multiply and I'm going to go in with a soft airbrush and just lay down some color and then I'm going to bring the opacity of the top layer down and I'm going to go back underneath with a dark color and that will just darken the entire painting. Here I'm going in with a soft brush and I'm just adding some more dark areas. If you make another layer and set it on top and set it to screen, then you can go in with a soft, in my case, a soft airbrush and you can give your objects a glow. What I usually do is I just choose a, the local color, whatever color I've used, and then I lighten it up. I go to the color wheel, I lighten it up, and then I just go over and I touch things up and I just add a glow. Now you need to be careful when you do this because you don't want it to be overdone. It would look garish if it was overdone, but just a little bit here and there around your focal point can really help the painting. I've made a duplicate of my painting. I'm going to set it to multiply and I'm just going to go over it with that dark airbrush again, a nice dark color. It just darkens things up and adds a bit more shadow. Now, as you can see, I'll test it here in a moment. You can see it does make a difference. It does darken things up. It's not a huge difference because of how many layers there are, but it works. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out more videos.